If you use JSM and you're a Microsoft 365 shop, then I got the perfect app for you. Yasun makes Microsoft 365 connector for Jira, and this is the perfect app if you want to blend your Microsoft 365 life, specifically your Microsoft Teams life, with your JSM portals. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video, and don't forget to check out the links down below, as you definitely want to start a free 30-day trial to this app. So the Microsoft 365 connector for Jira does so much, and I've already covered some of that functionality in a previous video. So make sure you check out the link in the description as that is a video you definitely don't want to miss out on. But this video is specifically geared towards these ITSM solutions. So if you and your company are using JSM for your ITSM solution, then you know that your service portal is very key and very foundational to the way your team interacts with JSM. Now, traditionally, your JSM portal is just a link, a URL that you give out to your team, and then anybody can go in and create tickets. But what if you wanted to save time and increase your communication and your efficiencies and collaborations between your IT support team via Microsoft Teams? And so what I'm about to show you is how your team can leverage the power of Microsoft Teams and the power of JSM together to essentially be able to create tickets via teams and put them into JSM in just one simple click. All right, so here we are inside of a traditional JSM portal. If you've ever used JSM or if you've ever used or interacted or raised a request via an Atlassian based uh, service management tool, then this should look very familiar. But what I'm about to show you is really, really cool. If you have Microsoft Teams, you also now have the ability to basically embed your portal into Teams. As you can see, this is my Teams UI. And as I scroll down, take a little peek, you can see that this is the exact same thing. Whatever I had in JSM, which is what my users are typically used to, right? If you don't have this plugin, you have to go to the URL that is created for your portal and Teams have to go in and figure it all out. And that can be a little disruptive to context awareness, right? Most teams are already in Teams. They're already working, they're already communicating there. So why not just bring JSM to them? And this is exactly what we're gonna be demonstrating here. So in Microsoft Teams, I have the ability to essentially embed my JSM portal into Teams. Now, as a quick disclaimer, you do need to work with your Microsoft 365 admin because they have to go and prepare a package. All the instructions are in the description down below. But once you prepare this package, you're essentially able to add this portal straight into Microsoft Teams. It's a one-time thing only. So once it's set up, it's done, it's good. It's no more configuration you gotta do, but there is that one little step that you gotta do. But once it's there, then you get to do the rest, which is actually be able to create tickets from within Teams and have your JSM agents be able to see them flawlessly and effortlessly. So let me show you how all that works. So let's pretend I'm a user. I'm gonna come in here. I have a computer problem. So I'm gonna click on this and I need a new mobile device. My phone broke. Please hope I don't, my phone doesn't break, but let's just say my phone broke and need new iPhone. Now I probably shouldn't be picking an iPhone when we're in a Microsoft 365 event, but if you're not using an iPhone, I'm sorry. Now, who is your manager? You're gonna be able to pick from your manager list here. So I'm just gonna pick Adele here. And then you're gonna be able to fill out the information. Phone broke, need a new one. And as you can see, the interaction is exactly the same as it would be inside of JSM with the added convenience that I'm now inside of Microsoft Teams, which is something that I always have open on my desktop anyways. I'm always chatting or interacting or in the world of Microsoft Teams. So it just makes so much sense to just bring in that portal and make it available here because now people don't have to go hunting for it, right? Half the time or half the battle is usually finding that service link portal and trying to figure out where do I go submit a ticket? Like it's just so annoying. That barrier can be very annoying for that end user. And so just naturally embedding it into Teams so much better. So once your team is able to essentially create the request, again, it's gonna work exactly the way it does in JSM. They're just gonna hit create. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna go into JSM and it's gonna create a ticket. As you can see, ATT-4 has been submitted. So I'm gonna put Microsoft Teams away for a second here and I'm gonna jump back into Jira and I'm gonna hide my portal here for a second as well because now I'm going straight into my queue. And so now I'm putting on my agent hand and as you can see, my need a new iPhone 
that was raised by me has just been submitted and is now visible in the queue. And this is now where we're going to focus on the second part of the video, which is now that we have a service desk ticket that was created via Teams, how can we benefit from having Yasun's Microsoft 365 connector for Jira? All right, so we're going to jump into this ticket. And again, I have my agent hat on. And what are some of the benefits of having this Microsoft Teams integration? So the first thing I want to highlight is that you can start a Teams conversation straight from the ticket. So again, preserving that context, preserving that awareness, and also going to the user where the user is already at, I can essentially just add any person here. Um, I can select the channel that I want to be on, or I can go into a specific chat. So if I want to speak with a specific individual, I can do that. Or if I want to go to a specific channel, and maybe just do a general blast, I can do that as well. In this case, I'm gonna do a chat, I'm gonna pick Adele here, and I'm gonna say, hey, um, hello, uh, can we chat about this? I have questions, <laughs> exclamation mark. And you'll notice that the title is automatically the ticket title, the ticket ID, and so this is all happening instantaneously, automatically, and I wanna hit the start chat button, the conversation is going to start. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over to Microsoft Teams and I'm going to show you that conversation, how the end user would see it on their end. And so as I bring Microsoft Teams over, I'm going to go over to chat and this chat now is the chat that I have with respect to this ticket. So as you can see here, I have the, hello, can we chat about this? I have questions. And there's also a link straight back to the ticket in case the user needs to be refreshed on what it is they're trying to do. And so what's really cool about this though, is not only can I now have a conversation because adding comments in JSM, it's cool, but it's very delayed. When you add a comment and you're, and you're relying on the comments capability of JSM, you gotta add the person, otherwise notifications get sometimes wonky. And then you gotta wait for them to check their email because it's not instantaneous, right? They don't get an immediate notification or they don't know that they gotta jump back into the ticket, right? So it's whenever they see it, um, I usually put my email off to the side and I check my email once every while, but my I am, I'm checking it every 10 seconds, right? And so the added benefit you get here is that instead of relying on those at mentions and relying on this delayed kind of almost archaic process of communicating with your end user, the conversation can happen instantaneously. The context of the ticket is preserved and we're able to collaborate. We're able to talk, we're able to ping pong back and forth and get this issue resolved as quick as possible, which in the world of ITSM, this is really, really good news. So here we are. I'm just going to, I am someone like uh, pretending that, that Adele messaged me back. She's got a question about, well, what's your question? Well, I go, well, can we meet? I need some clarification. Uh, we can do the attachments. This works just like a regular Teams meeting, right? So whatever you're used to Teams, it works here. You can call them up. But what's also really cool, and, and this is, I think, a little bit more unique, is that anybody else, right? You can mention other participants now. So folks don't need to have JSM access. They don't have to have a license to JSM, but they can now participate. They won't be able to see the tickets because you still the rules of Jira still exist, but they're able to come into this conversation. You can add other people, other participants that aren't the people in this ticket directly, right? So you can add other folks, right? I can add Carlos, I can add a bunch of different people, right? Anybody who's relevant here, and they can come into the conversation and start participating and maybe collaborating and helping us arrive at a conclusion much more efficiently, much more effectively than we would if we were relying on mentioning people or sending an email or even starting a Teams conversation, but losing the context of the awareness that this is with respect to ATT4, right? So this, I think, is just so much more streamlined, so much easier. Now, let's go back to the ticket because there's a couple of other things that I want to show you that you're able to do with this Microsoft connector. So number one, because we have initiated a chat, our SLAs have paused. Now, this is handled through an automation rule. And essentially what's happening is because there's an interaction and because I am now working on the ticket, I'm waiting for a response. I'm waiting for someone to get back to me and I'm able to pause the timers so that my SLAs are not impacted. Normally, you have to respond to the customer. You got to at somebody or you got to transition it, right? Depending on what your SLAs are set up for. But normally you're depending on very Jira specific actions to pause and start and complete these timers. But with this plugin, you're also able to add some automations 
to help you with those SLAs. So that's really, really cool. Now let's pretend that we wanted to go beyond this chat. Let's just pretend that we wanted to actually start a meeting or schedule a meeting. Well, I'm able to click over here on these ellipses and I can go to Outlook Meetings. Once this window pops up, you're going to be able to set the title, which again, is already done for you. It's the ticket and you're able to pick your attendees. So I'm just going to pick Adele and I'm going to get Carlos in here is involved as well. And so I'm going to get my two folks here to help me out. The same smarts of Outlook that help you schedule meetings based on availability, all that works. So it's already going to make a recommendation as to when we should meet. Of course, we can alter these values to whatever you want, whatever makes sense for the team. But again, I just wanted to highlight that however it works in Outlook, it's working in here as well. You can pick your location. This is going to be a virtual one. As you can see, the comment is already the ticket here and I can just hit send. And so those individuals are going to get a meeting and they're going to know what the meeting is about. And it's all going to be preserved with respect to the fact that we are having a meeting based on this ticket. It's all that information, all that context is preserved with this powerful connector. Now, the other thing is you're going to see the meetings here. So if anybody else, maybe your manager wants to see what's going on, people want an update, you can very easily see that you have meetings scheduled already. You can join from here, which can just having to go find links and having to go just disrupt your flow of context is just so bad. It is so, so detrimental. That is so amazing that you can just have everything in this UI. So again, if you're a Microsoft Teams and you're using JSM or just Jira for that matter, because there's a lot of Jira capabilities here, this is really, really powerful, folks. This is just the moment that you reduce these barriers of communication for you and your team, your collaboration and your efficiencies just exponentially go up. So just that alone, it's hard to measure in monetary value, but trust me, when your barrier for communication is drastically lowered like they are here, your team is just going to be so much more efficient. So definitely check out this app. Now, there's one last thing that I want to show you. As you remember, I have a portal here and the same portal shows up inside of Microsoft Teams. Now, the portals are cool and being able to get IT help is cool. But what's really cool about JSM is that not only do we have these like very static forms, but we can build dynamic forms as well. So I'm going to go back into Jira and I'm going to essentially create a quick form. I'm going to go to my project settings. I'm going to go to my forms and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a very, very quick form. So I'm just going to say Ape Tech Demo. I'm going to add another field, but this one I'm going to make it a drop down. And this one I'm going to do computer type. I'm going to give it two types here. I'm going to go Mac. I'm going to go iPad. I'm going to go um, Windows. Okay. And what I'm going to do next though is I'm going to add a section because if the section is uh, Mac and it's going to be a conditional one. So if the user picked Mac, right, then I want to add a field and I'm going to say, here's a OS version, right? And this version is going to be very dependent on whatever they picked. So if they don't pick Mac, then I would not expect OS version to show up. Now, this is a whole lecture on forms, but I'm just going to create this for now just to show you how to embed this form that I've created back into my request type, which is then going to be visible from within the Microsoft connector. So check this out. So once it's saved, I'm going to go back into my project and we're going to essentially just add this form to a request type. I'm going to go to my project settings, go to request types. I'm going to go to this fixed account problem here. And all I'm going to do is just add my form. So there's a section here to add my form down here at the bottom. I can select existing. I'm going to pick my Ape Tech form that I just made, click on add, and I'm going to save my changes. So now when I pick this fixed account problem, I'm going to see this form. And so my form with the username, the computer type is here. When I pick Mac, you can see the OS version. But when I pick iPad, you don't see anything else. That's cool. This always worked. But let's go see what it looks like inside of Teams. So when I bring Teams back over here, and we go back to my ATT desk, I'm going to be able to go to the exact same login and accounts, fix an account problem. And now down here, you see my form as well. So when I pick Mac, I can then pick the OS version. So this is really cool and powerful because again, you can now bring in the power of forms, which if you're not taking advantage of, highly recommend you take advantage of, and you can bring them into your Microsoft Teams environment as well. So you can now not just create these boring static forms and collect very boring static information, but now you can create these dynamic forms that are much more tailored and customized to the specific needs of your ITSM 
requirements. So definitely check that out. So just as a reminder, the app is free for up to 10 people, but if you use the link in the description down below, you can start a free 30 day trial. I highly recommend again, if you're a Microsoft 365 shop and or using JSM or even Jira, right? This work work with Jira and JSM, but the book, the video was focused on JSM, but this app is really, really powerful, really, really cool. It just, it's such a great harmony between the Microsoft stack and the Atlassian stack. And it just, it just makes sense. So if you are a Microsoft shop, highly recommend you give this a 30 day trial. That's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you check out the merch store, make sure you check out their app and I'll see you in the next one.